In the previous chapter, we learned about quality management. Here, we want to learn about quality control. So we're going to learn what quality control is and how to perform it. One of the approaches in quality control is done through inspection. So we're going to learn what inspection is, where to do inspection, and how often to do inspection. We're going to learn about a statistical process control, which is a statistical tools used in quality control. So we're going to learn about um, some statistical charts such as X bar chart or C chart and R bar chart to identify whether the a process that we want to control to do quality control for whether it is actually um, high quality or not, whether it has acceptable variation or not. So we're going to learn about uh, variability, the variability that we learned such as natural variability or random variability or whether it is a non-random variability that we can find a cause for. So we're going to learn about unstable processes. That means that the process variability is uh, out of control. It's not acceptable. It's actually not natural. The variability is due to some causes that we can find identify the source. And hopefully if we fix it, the variability is going to go away. Um, hope that you enjoy this chapter and learn about quality control, which is a very important topic um, in every operation management um, and also in, for every organization that either produce a product or uh, provide a service. The learning objective for this chapter is as follows. By the end of this chapter, you will learn about quality control what it is and why do we need it. You will learn about inspection, what are the basic issues of inspection, for example, where to perform inspection, how often do you perform inspection. And you will learn about the control process and some tools in, used in control process, such as different charts and uh, statistical tools to do that. And you will be able to use and interpret control charts. What is quality control? Quality control is a process that phases of quality assurance. There are three phases of quality assurance. At the very low phase or lowest spectrum, as you see on the left, we have the least progressive phase. In this phase, we do the inspection of products before and after production. So uh, this is done by doing a sampling. In the middle of the spectrum, we have the process control, and that is when we do inspection and corrective action during the production process. So this is called process control. One step further than this and one phase above this is at the very right that you see here, that's the most progressive phase of quality assurance. And then when the quality actually is built into the process, as we learned about the continuous improvement. So this is done by this philosophy of never ending improvement, always making correction and taking a step to make it better. As you notice, inspection was one of the tools used in the three phases, at least the two phases of the three phases of uh, quality assurance. What is inspection? What do you think is inspection is? And what are, what are the questions that you need to answer if you want to do inspection for quality assurance in, for example, a manufacturing site? Try to answer this question before you move on. Inspection is an activity that compares goods or services to a standard and benchmark. The question and important issues to consider for inspection is first, how much inspection to do and how often to do it. So, for example, if you have a manufacturing facility that produces tens of thousands of a product, 
do you have to do inspection on all of these 10,000 or are you going to do inspection through sampling? Or if it's actually more than that, if it produces millions of items, do you want to do inspection on all of the items? So it is important to answer how much to inspect and how often to inspect. Next is, at what points in the process do you want to do inspection? Is it before every operation, during every operation, after every operation? Third is whether to inspect in a centralized or on-site location. Do you want to have an inspection department, for example, that you take, uh, you do an inspection from every operation in that department? And fourth is whether to inspect attributes or variables. We're going to learn about attributes and variables later on. As we learned, one of the important issues in inspection is where to do the inspection in the process. These are called inspection points. So the popular and well-known inspection points in a manufacturing is uh, at the very beginning of the manufacturing cycle, that's when you have the raw materials and purchase parts. Because as we know it, when if the the raw materials is, are defected then it doesn't matter how good quality of process you have throughout your manufacturing uh, the finished product is going to be defected because the raw materials that is based on is defected the next in, uh, inspection point is at the very end of the manufacturing cycle and that's where you have produced the finished product and you want to ship it to customer so before you do that you want to inspect to you for quality assurance another point is before a costly operation so if you have a costly operation and if you have a product that is defected and you send it to this operation costly operation that is a waste of money because you have worked on a defective product. So it would make sense to inspect the product before going through this process. Another inspection point is before an irreversible process. So if, if you have an irreversible process, you want to do inspection before that so that if there is something wrong with a product that is going through this process, you want to fix it before you send it to if it's fixable. If it's not, then you have performed an irreversible process on that defective product that you cannot fix it. And another point is inspection point is before a covering process, because the covering process is going to cover the product so it makes it difficult or impossible to inspect uh, the quality of the product that you have within that cover a statistical process control or SPC so quality control wants to make sure that every product every service conforms to a standard or a benchmark a specification but how do we do that well we're gonna use a tool called the statistical process control or SPC SPC is a statistical evaluation of the output of a process and it helps us to decide if a process is okay is following the standard it uh, conforms to the specification which we say it's in control or if it's not that means that we need to take corrective actions to correct it before we learn more about quality control we need to learn about process variability so there are two basic questions concerning the variability for a process 
and that's going to be related to the issue of process control if the variation is non-random. So the question to ask is, are the variations in the process ran random? That means that the, the, the variation is natural. There are, there are some variations in processes that we cannot uh, modify, we cannot change, we, cannot have, we don't have any control over. But if non-random variation is available in the process, the process is called unstable and we can take action to correct it. So if it's not, if it's random, if the process variation is random, then there's the issue of process capability. That's the inherent variability of process output to relative to whatever variation allowed uh, according to the standards by the design specification. So we need to have room so, so for some natural or random variation. That's the process capability. But we're going to uh, find the unstable process as those random variations that we can um, find and identify the source, the cause, and make take corrective action. There are two types of variation as we learned. There is the random variation, which is the common cause variation. That's natural variation. There is natural variation in every process. Uh, this variation is created by countless minor factors that we cannot really um, fix or have any control over. And there is the assignable variation. That's the special cause variation. That the variation, uh, we can actually identify what causes that variation. The source of the variation we can identify. And we can probably fix it. And assignable variation is non-random variation, is not natural, is unnatural variation. The statistical process control or SBC is a, a statistics tools and method. And it uses sampling and sampling distribution to help us identify um, the unstable processes and take corrective action if necessary. Um, so it's important to know about sampling and sampling distribution. You might have already learned about this in a statistical um, textbooks or courses. So SBC involves periodically taking samples of process output and compute the sample statistics such as sample means, sample standard deviation, sample uh, variance and the number of occurrences of some outcome. The reason for taking a sample, if you remember from a statistics, is we cannot afford to work with every items and members of the population. For example, if you want to do quality control on a manufacturing site that produces millions of items, it might be impractical or time consuming and also costly to do this for every item. So that's why we take, instead of working with the population, we're gonna work with the samples. Sample statistics are used to judge the randomness of process variation and uh, help us to identify uh, the unstable or out of control products to take corrective action. What are the steps of control process? What is the procedure for control process? Sampling and sampling distribution and taking corrective actions are only uh, part of the control process. There are other steps uh, required in effective uh, process control, such as first you need to define what is to be controlled. What is it that you want to control? What is the, the variable that you want to control? Is it, for example, the weight an item? Is it the lengths or dimensions of an item. So the variable that you want to control must be defined. Next is the measurement. Is what we want to control measurable? And if so, how you can measure it? Next is comparison and comparing. There must be a standard or a benchmark for comparison so that when you identify or you want to inspect a product, you, you compare that variable 
using its measurement to a, a standard then based on this comparison you say okay this is good or this is bad so you need to have a standard and a benchmark for comparison next is evaluation you need to establish a definition of out of control that is a variability that is not acceptable the variability between uh, the measurement of whatever you want to control compare that to uh, the standard or the benchmark if the variability is um, too much you have to also define how much is acceptable then you're gonna say okay this is not acceptable this is out of control and we have to remember that some variation level um, is inevitable there was natural variation. And after that, you identify the out of control process, you need to um, uncover the cause, what has caused this process to be out of control and this measurement of this variable to be so out of the, or um, too much away from the standard of benchmark. And you need to fix it. And the last but the least, not the least, is the monitoring the results. So you need to verify that the problem has been eliminated and the system is back to, the process is actually back to acceptable range and it's under control. So for every pro control process, we need to do all of these steps.